Hi, everyone. This is Derek Williams with 10 Bound, and you're listening to the 10 Bound Research Labs podcast. I have a special guest today. Dove Kaufman is the CEO and co-founder of Tolstoy. Tolstoy is a new way to communicate with and helping SDRs and SDR teams, I should say, better you know, tell stories through interactive video. Their platform gives leads the experience of face-to-face conversations, but in a self-service sort of manner with video branching, which I really look forward to digging into. You can actually steer prospects to the right content and even understand them better through their responses. So a lot to unpack here. Thanks for being on the show. I really appreciate it. Yeah, happy to be here. Thanks for having me on. For the listeners, everyone, Dove originally came to us as a new registration on the 10 bound directory for you know, sales development technology. We have the market map that's being updated as we speak. But also, you know, William Balance in one of our, our previous interviews here on the podcast pointed to Tolstoy as something they're using. So I thought it made sense that we reach out to Dove and kickstart this conversation in a big way. So Dove, tell us about your background a little bit. Let's open it up with telling the folks how you got to where you are and starting Tolstoy, specifically the inflection point, maybe when you had the idea for Tolstoy. I'm super intrigued about that. Oh, sure. So I was working at a company called Yatpo, building up a channel sales org there. So I was onboarding a lot of SDRs onto the company and trying to help them through engaging leads and booking demos. And at some point we got kind of so big and professional about it that it was, we just basically built out a script. The script was interactive. So you would ask the lead a question based on their answer. You would have a few different other answers to choose from, and it would go down like a logic tree. And it occurred to me that this process could ultimately be automated to help SDRs save time and also not have to do a lot of the repetitive work that we were having to do at the time. So there was that kind of idea. And then also the idea of wanting to keep communication face-to-face, that kind of realizing how important that was. So I spent a few years kind of thinking about how to merge those two ideas together. How do you keep kind of the face-to-face, high-touch experience of a sales call with an SDR while also automating the interactivity? And so that's how we came up with Tolstoy, basically like leveraging interactive video to give a really personalized feel to every video, but have it be branching and interactive. Got it. Thank you for that. And we do hear about video prospecting and how it can be super effective, but it's not a one size fits all model, right? So can you talk to me specifically about how Tolstoy is solving problems for SDRs and SDR teams? Maybe double click for the audience on what problem you're solving for us in the current state of affairs. Cool. So essentially the problem that we're solving is helping SDRs get more engagement on their content and book more demos. That's ultimately what we want to help SDR teams, AE teams do, book more demos. So how do you do that? I think until today, video has mainly been used, video has been around for a long time, but it's mainly been used to kind of call attention to the content and get prospects to click, almost Mm -hmm. like a gimmick. And what we are really trying to do is to go beyond that, to actually convey valuable information to leads, to get them truly engaged with the content itself, And so, for example, some of the things that we offer are really branching videos so you can ask your leads questions. Another is more tips around kind of where in the funnel to use video. So we've seen Tolstoy videos being really, really valuable, kind of a little bit down the funnel when a lead's already a little bit engaged and you don't want to, you don't need to work to grab their attention. You need to work to really convey information in a really fast and effective way. Those are some of the ways, making it really easy to create videos, making them interactive and giving kind of full visibility to the SDR on what's happening on those videos. All right. So the interactive aspect comes in when they're select, you know, on the video, there's going to be an option to choose something so they can actually click on the screen, make an option, you know, one or two, and then we branch out to that sort of path from there. Is that right? Exactly. Exactly. And so that you can use that for a few different things. One of them is really asking questions. Another is giving kind of a pretty full in-depth demo of the product, but not having it feel like a 40-minute YouTube video, rather just like a face-to-face conversation so the lead can choose what they're interested in learning about and then get only that information. So each clip can be you know, 30 seconds, a minute long. The other thing that this helps do is cut down the amount of time it takes to record every video mm-hmm. because you or someone on your team can record kind of an in-depth demo and have it be branching. And then you can use that as a template. And all you have to do is record like a 10 second intro for every new lead. And you can attach your template demo onto that. And so now you have like a fully fledged, hyper-personalized demo. It's really engaging and really cool. And it took you 10 seconds to create per lead. 
I hope you all are taking notes because Dove made that sound super simple. And actually it really is. I've seen the product in play. I've had several demos done for me and this is a new way of using video. And I really hope that we get you guys some more looks at this because if I was to receive a Tolstoy email, I think I would be super engaged. One thing that comes to mind as well is when you think about that demo experience, a lot of AE teams are trying to get their demo blueprint structured in a way where they can provide proof points throughout their demo. You know, that's why discovery is so, so important up front. And being able to, if I'm a demand gen person, if I'm top of funnel here, I'm looking at this, this is a way to really accelerate that demo experience and to learn, right? Because every interaction, now there's metadata attached to that, that you're able to tap into how long they're watched the video, I imagine is one thing, what videos they're watching, what options they're making. So if you supplement your SDR resource with that, your AEs, they can be far more tailored when they actually have that you know, communication with them in person. So this is awesome. Thank you, Dove. Let's get into some more pieces. How are you different though? Like, let's talk about differentiation a little bit. There's a lot of video vendors out there that come to mind. Name one, right? How are you different though? Is the video branching the core difference or is there more to the differentiation aspects? Yeah, no, great question. So for sure, the branching is kind of a key, key differentiator because it lets you ask your viewers questions. It lets you collect data from your viewers. So in many cases, SDRs are using this to either encourage people to come on to that qualification call or follow-up call, or in some cases, replace it completely by just asking the questions directly in the video itself. And it also lets you create kind of one flow and share it across your team. So you can do content sharing in a way that you can't really do with any other video solution because you can have one person kind of be in charge of creating that video sequence. And then all the other team members can just create their personalized intro to it. The other thing is just, it's much faster to record these videos because of the macros and they also get much higher engagement. So interactive video generally gets around 80% higher engagement rate than traditional video. And then the last thing, I'm biased, but I think the products are just beautiful and really fun to use. I think it's a new product that's built for today. And so it's just a very different experience from a lot of other video tools out there. I'm looking forward to actually putting it to work myself. I mean that. Let's see. So how does it show up in the body of the email though? That's a big piece for some of these video vendors that we talk to. It's a big deal. You know, the thumbnail, does it play automatically and so forth. So can you just double click for us, for those that are looking at the tactical aspects of this? How does it show up in the email? Yeah, totally. So it's up to you. We do offer kind of a ready-made GIF that you can just copy paste really, really easily. We also integrate with all the different sales outreach tools like Outreach, Sales Loft, HubSpot. And so you can have your videos readily accessible for you inside those apps as GIFs already mm. made, or you can just copy paste, whatever works for you. But you don't have to use a GIF if you don't want to. I think some people, some SDRs for reasons of like spam filters and stuff like that, they actually prefer not to use GIFs. In that case, you don't have to. We can give you a link that's very trusted. We have hundreds of thousands of visits across all of the different companies that we work with. So it won't appear in your spam filters. And you can do any of those things. We'll generate a landing page with the video for you kind of automatically. So it's all just out of the box. Super, super simple. Same goes for LinkedIn and anywhere else you want to share it. Beautiful. It's not just an email, right? I can attach this to my website. Yeah. Yeah. You can embed it on your website with a simple snippet of code that we generate for you. You can place it on your website as a little video bubble that sits on the bottom of your website or on the top. You can basically do anything you want. Our aim is to make it super, super easy to use video everywhere where you want to connect with someone outside of your company. Interactive video, interactive video with branching people. It's different and it's awesome, but there are some looming you know, concerns or questions around video. Do you think we've over-conditioned people to video? Are we tuning out video now? What are your thoughts on video in general as a practice in the prospecting world? Yeah, so great question. So definitely video is taking over. But when you zoom out, you just see it kind of growing exponentially in terms of how often it's used in the workplace. I don't think we're past video. I actually, I don't think we'll ever be past video. What I do think we're past is past gimmicky video. Mm. I think people expect, they don't care that it's video versus text anymore. What they care about is, I'm talking about viewers. Mm -hmm. I think what viewers care about, what I care about when I watch something or read something is that the content is actually meaningful and gives me value and is worth my time. And so I would say this would be a recommendation, no matter what tool you use, is just to make sure that the content's not gimmicky because 
The days of someone opening your video just because they haven't been sent a video before, those days I do think are reaching a close. Now people are totally used to getting video, but where you can stand out is in the quality of your content. And Tolstoy really aims to kind of help that and help personalize your content to every single type of lead that you have with the branches. Yeah. One thing that comes to mind here is some of those questions that we craft in our planning sessions with our SDR teams. This might be a good place to park some of those you know, probing questions, actually, things that you can ask that you're, you know, no matter what they say, it's kind of setting you up to talk about something you're good at. So think about those very specific questions that you have in your bag there for the audience. And imagine embedding those as questions in this video that people can interact with. And then if they make a certain selection based on something that's specific to your industries, very relevant, not just the cheesy, are you available Tuesday or Thursday to meet, but something very specific and tactical that really might get their wheels turning. Think about embedding that in this video sequence where now they don't actually have to engage with the SDR directly. And so they're probably a little bit more comfortable. They're going to lean forward and have that engagement, if you will. So love the idea of it. You know, do you start with video? When you reach out to folks, do you lead with Tolstoy? Is that the first touch? Is, is video good to lead with? Or do you think maybe video comes in later in a touch cadence? Yeah, so this is a question that we're constantly looking into and talking with our users about. I actually see a ton of users using video as like the second step, whether it's someone who's already booked a demo, but you're not sure they're going to show up. Sending them a short video increases the likelihood of them actually attending that meeting. Hack. Like tenfold. Yeah. Nice. It's ridiculous. Okay. Because they have a personal, they feel like personally connected now. That's number one. Another place is like a second email in your outreach sequence where the first, you may want to just convey information super succinctly, simply inside the email. You don't want them clicking on anything. You just want to convey quick information, but where you want to go in a little more depth when the person you're sending the video to maybe needs a little more education into what you do, why you're different from the competition, stuff like that. That's where video is the killer feature. And so it's really interesting that you ask that because we have seen more and more, we kind of started with, hey, let's just send this out to every single prospect. And I think there's certain occasions where that's still very relevant. Like if someone just accepted you on LinkedIn or they wrote a blog post that you're interested in, video adds that personal touch. But otherwise, if you just want to like send a quick email out to 500 leads and you want a very high response rate, maybe the first email is text, second email is video, third email is video. Got it. Okay. Well, that's the kind of information we're looking for. And that's a great hack there. Thanks for sharing that. I hope you guys took that note down. Show rate is a big deal. If you are anywhere above 10% no show, then you have a problem in our book at 10 bound and you need to solve for that. And it sounds like using a tool like Tolstoy can help you get people to show up for these meetings more often. So good call out there. Thank you. Do you see clients using Tolstoy for internal use cases like SDR training? Yeah, so we have companies that use Tolstoy for onboarding new employees, SDR training, AE training, a lot of internal use cases. It's not our focus area, but we've seen people really at this point use Tolstoy for everything. It's like video support for that same kind of idea that it just adds a personal touch. And you can also, because the videos are branching, especially for training, you can also like ask questions, have people answer, and then see if they answer correctly or not correctly. You can break up a long training session into shorter pieces and ask people questions throughout. So you make sure that the SDR or the AE being trained is actually listening. So you definitely can use Tolstoy for that, but we're really, I think like head down focused on how do we get more engagement and how do we book demos for SDRs? Follow. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I have, the reason I bring that up is just to let our audience know that it's far more sticky than mm. that, right? The fact that they can maximize their investment in multiple ways and you know, SDR development is a big gap for a lot of organizations and getting them up to speed and getting that SDR effectiveness on board. So love that we can cool. use that at use case, but absolutely folks, you know, let's make sure we're generating pipeline. Now let's get into the weeds a little bit more about your technology, if you can. I don't know what you're comfortable sharing. I always like to ask this because it's a technology oriented show. You know, can you talk to us about the IP at all and what Tolstoy is built on top of and why that's important for listeners? I, maybe that's a key differentiator for you as well. Cool. So yeah, we built proprietary tech that lets you record and share videos like lightning fast. 
So we built a compression model that will record the videos really quickly, whether it's using our Chrome extension or our web app, and then also share the video really quickly, play it really quickly for people. We have many, many millions of viewers on our videos every month. And the speed of delivery is incredibly, incredibly important on mobile, on every type of Wi-Fi. And so Tolstoy videos should just work across the board really, really quickly. And that is especially important for interactive videos because someone's clicking, you don't want them to wait, you don't want it to feel clunky. So Tolstoy, we really built it to feel smooth. So that's number one. Number two is all the integrations we built. You mentioned the data that comes in from these videos, whether it's time spent on the video or which path did the viewer take? What did they answer? What did they want to learn about? All that stuff is really, really valuable information. And we can disseminate that information across the tech stack to the rest of your team, whether it's to the account executives or the marketing team. We've had some companies leverage the information that they get on their viewers from Tolstoy and use that to like power retargeting campaigns. So you can really kind of go crazy. Tolstoy is meant to work together with the other tools in your tech stack. Good to know. Good to know. Now let's say that I just partnered with Tolstoy and I have an SDR team, or let's say I'm an SDR. Do I just start recording videos? Like how do I get started with it? If my company just got Tolstoy. Cool. So yeah, all you have to do sign in, go tolstoy.com, start recording. You can even use videos that you recorded on other platforms just to see how different sharing them on Tolstoy is. You can record a Tolstoy in like a minute. We've seen also kind of interesting is we've seen people get better and better at creating Tolstoys over time. Whereas at first, maybe it's like a little awkward, whether I haven't either because I don't have experience with video at all. And I feel a little awkward using it, or I have experience with video, but I don't really know how to leverage interactive video. And so we've seen users get by their second, third, fourth Tolstoy, they just get ridiculously good. They had like Tolstoy game and it's really, really fun to also to get better at it and share the videos and see the difference it makes on your sequences. But yeah, it's really, really quick and easy. You can get up and running, you know, within minutes during this podcast while you're listening, <laughs> start sharing it and see results. Yeah. All right. We're going to be checking everybody and make sure you got your tool story set up by the end of this interview. So do I need any special equipment though, or is it just? No, no, no. This is meant, we built it to be kind of product led from day one. So you can record even using your computer camera. You literally don't have to move. You can record it on your phone. Like I said, you can, if you do want to do something a little more special, you have like a DSLR or something like that. You can record it offline and then upload it. It's totally up to you. We support everything. Very good. And to what length does your client success team go to ensure client success with everybody that warns on if we have questions, if we have challenges? And I don't know, maybe you can list out what those top areas of you know support are, but to what length does your team go? Well, so yeah. So A, we have kind of two different tiers of support. We have support and tech support, and then we have really customer success. These resources are available to everyone. We also have a lot of different playbooks and content on what videos are really good. We have an inspiration section on the site and inside the app, we actually just recently launched like a video knowledge base. And we're going to be beefing that up over the next few weeks and months. So you can see live examples from top companies leveraging Tolstoy. It's actually really cool. And we share some kind of success stories, all of it like with video because we're Tolstoy. And so you have access to all of that inside the app. If you have any additional questions, any kind of issues you run into, we have support that is also based on Tolstoy. So you can submit a text ticket, but you can also submit a video ticket. You can share your screen and show the issue. And our support team will respond to you most likely with video. So you get to know us a little bit as well. I love that. I love that. Drinking your own beer, eating your own dog food. That's good. Okay. So am I reading this right though? If I go to your website, it says that Tolstoy is totally free. Am I off my rocker here? Yeah, no, definitely not off your rocker. Tolstoy is currently free. It's been free for the past year while we've been in beta. We're quickly trends are slowly, quickly transitioning out of beta into kind of general release. So Tolstoy will start charging. We'll always have a free plan that you can use to kind of get familiarized with the platform, really see that it delivers the results we're saying it does. And then you can upgrade to a paid plan for 10 bucks a month per user, super simple. We really want pricing to not be an issue at all. And for even individual SDRs to be able to get up and running on their own and then convince their team based on their results that this is worthwhile. Yeah, that's a good model there. Let's prove it and then scale it out. You had mentioned some integrations earlier. I currently see a ton of integrations on your website across all lines of business applications. I see SalesLoft, Outreach, HubSpot, Calendly. 
I mean, it looks like almost anything can be integrated with Tolstoy. Can you tell me a little bit more about how these integrations are set up? Are we talking Zapier across the web hooks, custom APIs? Like how do we bring it all together? So both. We do have via Zapier, you can basically integrate with anything. We're also releasing an Integromat integration. So anything that's not covered by Zapier, but is by Integromat, you can use that too. And then we also have native integrations that we've built out with companies that we've partnered with, like Salesloft, Outreach. We're launching Salesforce and Marketo, Intercom, HubSpot, Mm. really anything. Any tool that you're using should be able to work with Tolstoy. If it doesn't, shoot us a message and we'll integrate with it. Fair enough. Beautiful. Personally love that we have seamless integration set up, those native integrations, particularly, you know, for you know, admins that aren't super adept at Zapier or haven't gone down that path yet. It's good to know that you have native integrations with the core tools that SDR teams are using right now. So totally. big call out. Integrations are key for us. Another thing that's actually cool, maybe worth sharing, we have a new integration that just came out with a company called Synthesia. They do AI videos, so you don't even have to record yourself. You can type out some text and a talking face. They'll generate it for you and say what you want to say. So you can, we now have an integration with them. So you can create videos in Synthesia and they'll just automatically appear inside your Tolstoy and be ready to use. So you can make them interactive and share them with your leads. And then you literally don't even have to film yourself if you don't want to. It's super, super cool. Wow. Okay. Future of sales. Hashtag. That was awesome. Thank you for that. Uh, I'm uh, Very few people know about it. It's like really new. I'm obsessed with it. I think it's great. Well, I'm going to, as soon as we hang up, look into these guys. And I'm probably going to need you to send me a link because I have no idea how to spell that. Well, I will. You can also see it inside of our app. And there are a few. We're integrating with a few really, really cool solutions. So we really want you to be able to do anything inside of Tolstoy. Okay, fair enough. Now, you had shared with me that you don't currently have an SDR team right now of your own. You're in a different model or phase at this current time of development. How do you approach you know, pipeline generation? You mentioned being product-led. Can you double-click on that for our product-led listeners? Sure. So there are a few things. One is Tolstoy is being shared on a daily basis, millions of viewers, So people have access and visibility into interactive video kind of for the first time, they get really excited about it. Then they go and check out our site. We have a little bit of branding on the videos, which you can remove in the paid plans, but that's been really, really valuable for us just to kind of like spread the word. And it also builds a brand and makes the videos themselves kind of stand out and trustworthy. So it's, we've seen that be really a win-win. So that's number one, virality has just been great for us. Number two is LinkedIn thought leadership has been really, really valuable for us. Mm. So we launched on Product Hunt and then a few LinkedIn influencers found out about us and started talking about us. And the community just kind of picked this product up and has been talking about it. And that's been great. We've really kind of leaned into that and really want to support kind of the community on LinkedIn. Just like video prospecting is a growing field. And there's a really, really amazing community that's kind of grown up around that. Do you track PQL's product qualified leads in your model? Yes, kind of. Because we've been growing really quickly, we're still relatively new. Getting all the processes in place for tracking things properly is like a challenge that we're literally dealing with right now. And we're starting to use this tool, it's really cool, called Calixa, Mm -hmm. that's helping us do that. And that is helping us basically identify who are the leads that we should be reaching out to and the leads that are most likely to really be paying customers, long-term customers, valuable customers. And so we're early, early days of this, still setting everything up, but really excited about a lot of tools that can kind of help us do that. Yeah. Usually towards the end of the interview, I like to ask about other technology that we're using to drive success within your SDR team or pipeline generation. It sounds like Calyx is that for you. So you'd recommend that we give them a look as well. So we have two recommendations that have come out of this interview so far. Dove. Thank you, man. Totally. totally. Sure. And then I'll actually give you one more. If you're down, it's called June. I really like them as well. Like the month? Yeah, like the month. And they help product-led companies basically with product analytics. Mm. So at a higher level, like how do your users retain? Who are your most successful users? What features are people using? What features aren't people using? Stuff like that. So that's also been a big help for us. There we go. We have three awesome call-outs, but the one that we want you to walk away and remember most of is Tolstoy. It's they're changing the game when it comes to video prospecting. And I really hope that you know everyone here gives them a look. I was intrigued at first glance and I look forward to using it. Now, where can folks 
you know, find you, Dove, or how do you suggest they get a hold of Tolstoy? What's your call to action here? So I would recommend checking out the website. It's gotolstoy.com. Sign up. Uh, first, you can see a demo on the website. So gotolstoy.com. You can just search Tolstoy. You'll see us right there. Check out the video. And then I would say once you sign up, you'll actually get direct access to me because we have a sequence set up for all new users. They get an email with a video, with a GIF from me, where they get to know me a little bit and tell me a little bit also about themselves just by answering a question. So it's like interactive. And you can reply to that and I get every single reply. So I would love to hear from listeners who signed up as a result of this podcast. That would be awesome for me to hear. And also just to get some feedback on what we can do to improve. We're always looking to improve kind of how this compares to other tools you've used, any features you would like us to build out that you don't see yet, like hit me up. We're very eager for feedback. That's key. And for a lot of your you know, teams that have unique business requirements that may not be sort of common or standard that we see in a lot of cases, working with a company that's flexible like that, who can pivot and you know, incorporate changes quicker as opposed to waiting to the second half of the year or, you know, quarterly changes only or getting on the roadmap. That's what happens when we get vendor and partners that are start getting up in their success. It gets harder and harder to get those change elements implemented. So great call out as well. This has been a phenomenal interview. I think a lot of folks are going to get a lot of value from this and you know how to reach Tolstoy, everyone. So you've been listening to the 10 Bound Research Labs podcast and we're talking to the CEO and founder of Tolstoy. Make sure you check him out, everyone. Have a great day. Thanks, Derek. Thank you for listening to the Sales Development Podcast, the only audio forum 100% focused and dedicated to sales development with your host, David Delaney. Please be sure to subscribe to the show on YouTube and take a moment to leave us a review on iTunes. Your support makes our show possible. If you are struggling with your sales development program, contact us at 10bound.com for a no-obligation exploratory call. Again, that's 10bound.com.